Hey everybody, welcome back to Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff. We are going on to part two of my artist friend's commission today. It's the table that she's going to make into art and sell at her store. Well, she's going to use it to display things at her gallery. And then she's going to probably sell it out from under those things like she did to the last one. Seriously. Every time. Anyway, she's going to paint it up. I use it for display purposes and it'll be for sale down at her gallery as well. So straightforward build. I say that sometimes though, don't I? Uh, it's actually going to be a lot like my outdoor benches or what's the theory behind my outdoor benches. Piece of plywood on top, simple, straightforward legs and stretch uh, and rails. And what are those called? Aprons. That's what they're called on a table. Legs and aprons and a plywood top edged out and uh, off it goes. She can paint it up however she wants. Let's do it. All right, table, let's go. So we start by taking the three quarter inch sheet of, well, wait, no, half of a sheet of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood and uh, trim off whatever 48 minus 32 is because it ended up being a 32 by 32 inch top that she was looking for. Then uh, rip down that the rest of that six by six piece of cedar that I used for the legs on my uh, outdoor benches, and took four bits for the legs. They were 28, I believe, inches long, which is just about perfect for a table. And then, of course, you joint and rip up the opposite side and plane, get them all square, and then you got your four legs that you just have to make look a little bit better. So four legs, 28 inches by, uh, I guess, about, uh, what is that, two and a half or so by the time all the milling is done. Uh, there you go, get them all the same length, and then you can start on stretchers. That was uh, Douglas fir for the stretchers, because that's what I had nice and handy. And same thing, joint, plane, get them flat, get them square. And then we can work on how long they need to be in order to fit the 32 inch table. I don't even know what they ended up being. I never even measured it because what I ended up doing was putting the legs in place and then getting the offset that I wanted for the legs as you can see me doing here. Offset I think two inches from either side and then I measured the inside of those. But even that was just an approximate because I didn't really care as long as they were all the same. And so here we go. We cut them to whatever that length was. I'm going to say it was, well, geez, what's 32 minus 2 minus 5? 25? Something like that? 25 inches long? And then, of course, here I go getting overly fancy again, but I think it looks nice when you cut a little uh, curve in things. So this one I just drew by eye to set a center point freehanded a curve on it and then cut it out and as long as they're all approximately the same uh, that's all that matters it was a nice I think it was an inch in on the bottom and then cut whatever that curve ends up being and there we go sand sand make that curve nice and even and do an initial sanding on the stretcher pieces as well then I have to go taper the legs, don't I? Am I doing that next? Yep, here we go. Uh, I want to say five inches from the bottom and an inch and a quarter or so in from the inside. Mark one of them, try to mark the second one, and then same thing I did on the, uh, on the benches. You cut one side, tape it back on, because that's where your mark is for the second taper. And then you cut the second side. Pretty uh, simple and straightforward. Then you just gotta even everything out over with the sander, and or hand planes or whatever. You can actually do this on the jointer as well. I've seen people do that, but I did. And here we go, that's the basic upside down table that we've got. Um, and since this was going to be an art piece and that is plenty structurally sound with just pocket hole screws, I just use pocket hole screws. Um, if you don't know anything about pocket hole screws, you're going to find out somewhere else because I'm not going to do any kind of tutorial on pocket hole screws. I'm not good enough at it and I just know that for quick simple joinery, it's a pretty easy system. 
glue on the ends of the stretchers. I set the reveal with a random piece of scrap that I had. Just again, I don't know what it was. I just knew that I wanted it even all the way around. Uh, it's probably a little bit more than a quarter. It was about three sixteenths or something. And screw it all together. And then what is this? What am I doing here? Why am I putting? Oh, oh, that's the trim. Ah, there we go. Yeah, and then I trimmed out the edge with, uh, I wanted a nice piece of hardwood to keep it from dinging up, and so I went with the hobby oak that I use for tenons sometimes. Just measured the depth, and then I cut out this little piece just to make sure that it was, in fact, the right depth. And it was, so I could cut the uh, edging. We'll call it edge, homemade edge banding. And uh, yeah, that fits on there. Put some glue on the edge. Stick a piece of wood on. And we just clamp it with uh, painter's tape. Works just fine. You don't need any fancy clamps. And there we go. We got our edge banded tabletop and our base sitting over there on the table saw. And that's going to be a table. Then uh, you want to chamfer the bottom of the legs to prevent them from splitting and stuff when the table's being moved around. Uh, so I just did that while I was waiting for the glue to dry. And then that night, as the sun started going down, I was like, what else can I do? And I took this little guy, and I forgot about this little plane that I actually quite like. And I just trimmed off the edge banding to make it flush with the top. And there we go. Just have to drill the pocket hole screws in from the bottom. And uh, you get yourself a table after you obviously you know, do a, a nice sanding. I, it was being painted, like I said, so I think I just went up to 150 on this one. There we go, attach the bottom, pocket holes, flip it over, deliver it to artist friend at her gallery. And that is a quick and dirty, let's call it card table. This is like card table size, right? It's bigger than an end table, but it's not a dining table. It's a card table. And this is what she did with it. Isn't that awesome? I was like, um, yes, thank you. I mean, it was a pretty nice table before, but then she made it into that. So, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again next time. I do one of these talkies. Bye for now.